Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Jupiter, Florida. We're out with the team today. We got Woo! Victor, Captain Tony's, Captain Stop. Tony's boat. We got Rob, Tim from Motion's Legacy, set the whole trip up. We got Benny. He's gonna teach me how to slow pitch today. I got, I got faith that I'm gonna catch a big one because Benny's gonna be really good luck. We'll see what we can do. Perfect. Bunch of fish today. I'm super excited. Let's get after it. Just got to the spot, putting on this jig, which I think probably has enough hooks on it. I don't know if you guys can see. We got like two sets of hooks on the top and the bottom. So there's no excuses. You're basically, you're setting yourself up right if now. If that fish doesn't get hooked, that fish doesn't get hooked. But this is an Ocean's Legacy Long Contact, 270 grams, pink and blue. I get a good feeling about pink and blue today. Oh, what makes you say that? I don't know, we'll see. And I'm gonna take this guy and drop it down cast a little bit of current. Why do you do that? So, as the boat's drifting, the jig is gonna keep dropping down exactly where it is. So theoretically, by the time we get to the point where we're over top of the jig, the jig's gonna be straight down for me. That way, when it's straight down for me, and I'm jigging up and down, I'm giving all of this motion to the jig, all of the action of the jig. If the jig's out there, this isn't moving it as much because 270 feet or you know 300 or 400 feet away, this thing is, I'm not gonna be affecting it as much. 240 foot. So just slowly let this guy down, and hopefully get into the strike zone. 240. What I gotta get better at is making sure that my jig's actually fluttering. So jig up, and then once it hits that top point, I want my line to be slack and I follow that slack down. Because it's slack, I know the jig's sitting there fluttering like this. The first time, a couple times I uh, came out jigging like this and tried to do like a slow pitch style. I was kind of jigging it and it was tight the whole time. So it'd be like almost like a vertical jig. So the jig's just sitting straight up and down. Most of these slow pitch jigs are designed so they get a really, really good flutter. So we're on the bottom, slowly jig up, let it sink back down. Slowly jig up, let it sink back down. Hopefully, hook a monster fish. The silent slayer is hooked up on a stud fish. I said it earlier. I said Rob wasn't gonna tell anyone when he hooked up, and he didn't. But he's got something nice. Oh, it's running too, isn't it? Yep. AJ, AJ like maybe? Not calling this one. No. Okay. Were you on the bottom when you got the bite? I was interested in the feet. Okay. So we just got out to the spot. First drop, Victor just caught a freaking fire truck. Beautiful red grouper on the jig. Awesome. I'm stoked. I've gotten like one drop, so I need to get my jig on, get in get the water. We need to catch some fish. First drop back after playing cameraman for Vic for a little bit. Just hooked something nice. Oh, first fish that I've actually hooked all day. Vic's been putting on a grouper clinic. And we'll see what we got here. This is a, a brand new rod that Tim wanted me to try, made by Ocean's Legacy. So this is Ocean's Legacy um, Elementus. So it's a little bit lighter and actually a little bit stronger than the slow element I fished my last trip. It's feeling pretty darn good. Oh my God, these head shakes are aggressive. Big porgy energy right there. Big porgy energy. Oh, I just felt one of the hooks rip out. You want to come down yeah. here? I'm going to loosen up a little bit on this thing because now he's off the bottom. Oh, man. Pulling. Pulling a little bit of drag. I got this reel specifically for slow pitch chicken. This is pretty cool. Shimano F Custom 1501. So it's a really tiny reel. This is like the size of a, like, a little bass reel or like a bait caster that you'd use for like throwing swim baits and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool that this small of a reel you can catch pretty massive fish on. Vic just caught like a 30 something pound gag grouper on this exact same size reel. We got color. A little something something. All in the co? Yep, you don't have to gaff them. Well, They're closed the anyway. Yep. Grab your purse, young man. <laughs> I learned that one from Ricky last yeah, time. Yeah, that's it. 
That's a Ricky quote. Unhooked. Sorry about that, bud. That is one of Vic's favorite eating fish. That's a good way to get hooked. You like eating these? I love all of them. How'd you cook these? Any way possible. Yeah. And fry, yeah, fried, grilled. They're delicious. Bam. You don't catch anything dolphin fishing. These are great. They got less worms in them, don't they? You're asking the wrong guy because I eat fish with worms eats, all the time. I saw him eat worms at the fillet table once. They don't, disgusting. They're 100 percent <laughs> harmless. Oh uh, yeah, a little bit taller version of an amberjack, and a little bit smaller than that beast Rob just caught. But we'll let this guy go. Vic's gonna be the only one catching a fish here in a second. <laughs> well, I'm changing jigs. Tim's changing jigs. I got hit on the on the drop. You don't have a fish. No, you don't. You liar. Oh yeah, I'm getting it. Just let me put this hook. As soon as the jig hit the bottom, no skill required. <laughs> oh, you got a nice fish, dude. Yeah, dude Hang on. I'm telling you, I got a good one. Alright, guys. Hang on. That's what your big gag did? Your 44 yeah. pounder? Yeah. yeah. Here. Tony, didn't you have a 40? Tell him about it. So, we, uh, a while back, we caught a 44 inch gag, about a good 40 pound gag, and it did the exact same thing. It rocked us. We spun the boat around for 20 minutes, loosening the line, loosening the drag, went dead slack, and finally he swimmed out, and all down the side of the fish is scarred from the rocks where he was. Wow. And he will come out. It's just you gotta give him time to let tension on, so try it. Put it in the free spool. Yeah? yeah try it. I, every time I do that, it never works out on my favorite. Really? <laughs> never. Oh, oh, I got some head shakes. He's out, Tony. He's, he's out. out. Right. He's out. He's out and he's pulling line. He's either out or he's in the reef. But I think he came out. I think he came out too when you saw that head yep. shake. Come on. Good. That looks good long, dude. Long and good. It's oh good. my Ooh. god! <laughs> dude! Keep his head down, keep his head down. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> Woo! Woo yes. Oh Ooh, what man! What a wow. tank! That's Holy smokes! Bro! Dude. Look at the size of that thing! Oh man, it's in in there! <laughs> Holy cow, dude! Hey. Was I was like, I saw how I saw how long it was. I was like, that's an AJ. I'm so sad. Is that so that's a nomad. Nomad. Streaker. Nomad streaker. Dude, 320 grams. Let me give you guys a lane. So. Oh no 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 no! I just took something like way up. I was reeling all the way up, maybe like I don't know, 50 feet away from the boat. I took something. It's pulling a good amount of drag. Tuna. It's pulling. Let's see what it is. Bonita. That's, I mean, that's another cool thing, the uncertainty of uh, what you got when you're bottom fishing, when you're fishing low. Woo, buddy! This thing. Something good. I literally was th sitting there thinking as I was reeling up, I was like, I've been reeling this up as fast as I can. Why don't I just jig it a little bit as I'm reeling up? As soon as I did that, I got hit on the way up. Coincidence? Probably. Will I take it? Absolutely. I'm gonna have to give that uh <laughs> it's not your fish. Whoa! If you didn't intentionally try to catch him, then it doesn't count? No, it doesn't count. If you didn't look at the fish in the eyes and say you're mine. When it's I not sent that eyes. jig down there for that gag, I summoned him. Well I, I didn't realize that those were wrapped like that until oh, yeah. this trip now when I was twisting that thing on yeah. I was like, Ooh. Dude, the OSHA jigger is just the pinnacle. That's me. Ooh. I got the scam. <laughs> oh, you got the good one. Okay, <laughs> scamp in the boat for Benny. There we go. Oh, Jake and Ryan's back. Whatever I got is definitely not a grouper because of how high up it hit in the water column. I don't take anything that's gonna pull drag. 20 pound braid, getting after him. This thing doesn't want to come to the surface, I'll tell you that. He likes to stay down. Come on, this is buddy. very good shot. Back 
Well, not backlit. Yeah, it is backlit. Which is backlit. I don't. I don't. Idea. I just sound like I know anything about photo and video. I don't. You really don't. I just learned a few words and just throw them out when <laughs> I think they're applicable. Dude, that thing ain't so high. Yep. It was the same thing happened with Rob. That's a better one, Ryan. Better Almaco. <laughs> risky game you're playing, Tony. Risky. I know. Risky, risky game. For the I got bolt cutters. I've been hooked before, so there you go. I'm actually gonna put this that's guy a, down. That's a yeah. nice size Almaco, dude. So once I switch over to the 320 gram, they started eating it. Something, sometimes it's something as simple as that. Just getting a little bit of a heavier jig so we're uh, fishing the right area of water. I can probably count on one hand the amount of times I've seen one of the sure. higher jigs. Uh, one that happens to me once. All right. Oh. This has to struggle with these hooks. They hook everything. Let's let this guy go. No, they don't have the same swim bladder issues that snapper and grouper do. So as long as you shoot them down, they can recuperate, you don't have to vent them or anything like that, they swim right back down. So some fun catch and release fishing. Let's try and get something for the dinner table though. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing ate it on the drop. Like it was like maybe a foot or two from the bottom. And it's got whacked. I'm not really sure. It did definitely pull a little bit at first. Oh. I think it pulled a lot of drag in the beginning, didn't it? Wake it up, yeah. Get up, man. Looking jacky. Yeah. Little Jackie, but uh, yeah, got to the point. I'm actually starting to feel like I'm jigging properly now. Like I'm in the right area. Well, you guys are super bad on this. Big head shake. This guy doesn't like the boat. Everybody loves the twin <laughs> Another jack. Well. I'm down. They don't fight as hard when you actually hook them in the mouth, huh? Well, they don't fight as hard when you uh, actually have tight drag the whole time. You know, doubly hooked. He wasn't going nowhere. Another one. You can let him go. Your there split you go. ring you. broke? No, no, the split ring just came undone. Yeah, it needs to be replaced. I don't know what we got going on. Had a fish, then you literally hit it on the fish. drop. Then I didn't have a fish. Then I thought I was cut off. What do we got? Blackfin. Yeah. Blackfin. Uh -oh. we had blackfin. What, blackfin? You're supposed to tire him out. Oh, sorry, Captain. I'll do better next time, I yeah. promise. Don't yell at the captain, rule number one. Oh, blackfin tuna. There you go. Thank you, sir. Ate it on the drop. Literally, he was moving so fast. He took a little, pretty little blackfin. Literally, I mean, I was, I thought I was about to hit the bottom, and then it just got whacked. Started running super fast, and then I thought I lost him, and I was like, well, well, I got cut off or something. Kept reeling, and then I realized it was a tuna changing directions. Sweet. Tim caught one of these that was massive on one of these trips, like a 30 pounder. This one's like just a couple pounds, you know, but I'll take it. It's some sushi. He's got the textbook colors right now too. It yeah, looks it looks beautiful. good. Well, that was a cold, wet ride in and a long ride in. Obviously it's nighttime now, but all in all, great trip. Got some cooking to do still, so absolutely stay tuned for that. But huge thanks to the team. Thanks to Captain Tony for hey. checking us out. Check his charter out. I'll get a link in the description. Thanks to Tim for putting this whole thing together. Vic. Thanks thank to you. Vic for your red grouper thumbnail, potentially, that oh, you guys big, clicked on. Big potential. And thanks to the rest of the team. All in all, great trip. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. That was just an absolutely unreal trip. Got my nice little blackfin that I'm gonna flay up for you guys. And I think it's crazy how much these guys lose their color and how different a fish can look just based on, you know, when they're lit up and when they're not. But super stoked on slow pitch fishing. Definitely can't wait to learn more about it. Get back out there with the boys. Cause that's just something that 
I think there's definitely a learning curve too. There's definitely stuff to learn about it. But overall, just a great trip with some great guys. Caught some fish. Not much else you want. Or not much else that you can ask for, you know. Vic ended up with that really, really nice gag grouper. We ended up giving away the red grouper to the rest of the guys, to Rob and um, to Rob and Benny. They took that guy home. And this tuna was all I really wanted because if you guys have been watching my other videos, ate a lot of grouper the past couple days from my trip over to the west coast of Florida. So didn't necessarily need a lot of grouper in my life and this tuna will do just fine for me. Is our nice little slab of tuna. Let's just knock the skin off real quick. Now just remove that a bloodline, that ever so tasty bloodline, and all that very very fishy tasting cut. Remove that out of there. We're left. The nice, we're not left with some nice tuna loins that we're gonna take into the kitchen. So I'll see you guys there. Welcome back to the kitchen. I wanted to give a shout out to one of my sponsors, Navalos Apparel. That's what I'm wearing right now. Shirt and shorts. They are made out of bamboo. And if you guys haven't tried bamboo clothing, it's significantly softer than a lot of stuff you've probably ever worn before. And it's actually a little bit more sustainable. And if you use my code Ryan20, it's actually gonna be a little bit cheaper than most of the performance clothing, most of the fishing shirts that you're gonna find nowadays. This company has really done well supporting me and um, I find myself grabbing them pretty commonly. I, I used them for like three months before I decided that I wanna work with the company. I wanted to make sure I liked the product before I offered it up to you guys. So if you're interested, I got some links down in the description below. Be sure to check them out. Again, bamboo, it's something that you probably have to feel you probably have to wear to actually know the difference, but I'm really, really digging it. We are going to be doing tuna two ways today. So I wanted to make like a little poke bowl and I also wanted to do some seared black fin. So take you guys along for the ride of that. Right now I'm just chopping some cucumbers, also got some green onion. And we're gonna go bring you guys through the whole process. So I took both of the top tuna loins, cleaned them up a little bit, just took the scraps of them, and those are gonna go in the poke bowl. So just kind of took off the edge and just nicely roll these in some sesame seeds. And I don't know if there's a sesame seed shortage, but I was literally spending all day, not all day, I was spent like 20 minutes looking for these things in the grocery store and only found one little thing of them. So. Didn't get nearly as many as I liked. I think of the black ones either. I like the like to do like a color combination of the black and these, you know, the, the lighter colored ones. But it is what it is. Just coat these guys. And these are just gonna get a light here. It's not gonna take very long at all. I already got a pan on medium high heat right now. Maybe closer to high than medium high. And drop them in there with a little sesame oil. All right, so we got some sesame oil. Pan's pretty hot, this might smoke a little bit, not a big deal. We're just gonna lay that a little bit of that in there. And then take our tuna loins, and these are only gonna take a couple seconds on each side, just to get started. So just to get that sear on there. Now let's drop these guys in the fridge real quick to make them a little bit easier to cut. So, for the poke bowl, just trimming these up into little, just tiny little pieces realistically, something that's easy to grab with a pair of chopsticks. Nothing too crazy, and that's why scraps are really good for the poke bowl. And this is literally just me doing it. I really have no clue what I'm doing, but it's enjoyable, and it's fun to try new things. I've, I don't think I've ever made one before, so bringing you guys along for the journey. Spicy mayo. Basically, same parts mayo to sriracha. Same amount of sriracha as I got mayo in there. 
And then I'm going to add just a touch of sesame oil and just really eyeball on this. And you said you like it spicy, right? Oh yeah. All right. I like my tuna, like I like my women. Nice and spicy? Mm-hmm. Got our spicy mayo. And just add some of this. Make it look all nice. If you don't make a mess, are you really having fun in the kitchen? I don't think so. My grandma used to say, if you aren't wearing it, you didn't enjoy it. So, I guess I'm supposed to get a bunch of spicy mayo all over me, but I'm not gonna do that to my favorite fish and shirt. Well, that was pretty darn good. My first time ever making poke bowl. I made a fatal mistake though, and the seared tuna, thought I had soy sauce. Didn't have soy sauce, but. Drove, was it still good? It was fantastic. He ate a whole pizza before this, yeah. and then I was like, hey man, I'm making sushi. He's like, ah, you could have told me like five minutes ago. I'm hurting, coach. There's a, <laughs> there's a war going on inside. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for hanging out. And, uh, you know, always being supportive and holding the camera and just being a good guy. Yeah, anytime. Appreciate you, man. He's the Grinch of culinary arts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. All around great trip. Slow pitch fishing is a great time. Great group of guys. And, you know, got a pretty nice meal out of just a little black fin. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one.